This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio C, here's Dave McCann and Kristen Kozlowski. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play here in Studio B, presented by, or Studio C, presented by the BYU Store, official outfit or BYU fans everywhere. It's Tuesday, July 19th, wherever and however you're connected with us. Nice to have you with us. I'm Dave McCann. Sitting next to the true mastermind of the Super Conference, Kristen Kozlowski. Listen, I do what I can to influence any and all decisions that are out there. But I'm telling you, Dave, nothing surprises me anymore. Well, you're very busy because every, like, 25 minutes a new idea yes, comes right? out. Yes, right. A new, new concept. We're I'm just plenty. trying to keep up at this point on the difference. Every day something's coming out. You know, it's right up there with the Donovan Mitchell jazz trade yes. here in the state of Utah. Is it happening? Is it not? Every 10 minutes you kind of check to see. Yeah. And that's the state yeah, of the college game, football. Right? Of what's coming next, for sure. So much to talk about today. Here is the lineup, this, including the latest on conference realignment. And there is a lot to talk about since you went to bed last night. Another watch list appearance for BYU quarterback Jaron Hall. Former Cougar Zach Selyus going to join us after his big night in the basketball tournament. Tyler Algier reports to the Falcons today with an impressive endorsement. And it's Top 5 Tuesday. We'll look at the top five dual sport athletes to compete at BYU. I bet you can think of a couple of them offhand, but uh, the few others might surprise you. That's coming up as we bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Yesterday, ESPN's Pete Thamel reported that the Big 12 and the Pac-12 are ending discussions of a potential partnership. Reportedly, the Big 12 officials informed the Pac-12 officials that they're no longer interested in their partnership. More on this in What's Trending. And then in other news, Texas and Oklahoma confirmed that there is no change to their 2025 exit from the Big 12. That's interesting because SC and UCLA are 2024 into the Big right. 10. Texas and Oklahoma staying put. Maybe we'll get both of them here at LES before it's all over. Jared Hall named this morning to the Davey O'Brien Award watch list given annually to the best quarterback in college football. He's one of 35 quarterbacks named to the list. Hall also named to the Maxwell Award watch list yesterday. It is watch list week. The only list you don't want to be on is the FBI's new list. <laughs> And congrats to Clark Barrington. He's been named to the Sporting News 2022 preseason All-American second team and Lindy Sports preseason All-American second team. He has now been selected as a preseason All-American in four organizations. Pretty good. Outstanding. Andrew Pintar and Cy Nielsen both selected in the Major League Baseball draft. Pintar goes in the fifth round as the 138th overall pick to the Arizona Diamondbacks, while Nielsen selected in the eighth round the 230th overall selection. This one by the Pittsburgh Pirates. We congratulate both of them. BYU baseball head coach Trent Pratt has named a new assistant, Abe Alvarez, as the new pitching coach here at BYU. Alvarez spent, spent the last four seasons as an assistant at the University of Nevada. He won a World Series ring with the Red Sox in 2004. That's awesome. That's a great pickup. Don't care much for the Red Sox, but it's awesome <laughs> to have a ring. Tyler Algier reports the Falcons training camp today uh, with the rest of the rookies in Atlanta. The veterans start in a week or so. Preseason opener August 12th against the Detroit Lions. More on Algier in just a bit. And Zach Selya scored 21 points, had five rebounds and two assists for the defeat diabetes team in the basketball tournament yesterday. Unfortunately, they were eliminated by sideline cancer by one point, 78 to 77 in that game. Zach will join us live here in just a moment coming up. Men's volleyball, Bartosz Swawinski and Poland took the bronze in the men's under-22 CEV European Volleyball Championship. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Yesterday, Pete Thamel of ESPN reported that the Big 12 and the Pac-12 ended all discussions regarding the potential of a partnership after two weeks of extensive talks. According to multiple sources, Big 12 officials told Pac-12 officials they're no longer interested in exploring the partnership. After USC and UCLA announced their relocation to the Big 10, reports came out that the Big 12 was in deep talks with multiple teams from the Pac-12, including Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, Utah, Washington, and Oregon. So now that the Big 12 and the Pac-12 are not going to merge, does this set up the time for the Big 12 to go and poach four teams from the Pac-12? Uh, yes, 
Absolutely. And I think that it was made clear by our Big 12 commissioner, Brett Yormack, that we are open for business. I mean, he said that and said, we're not going to leave any stone unturned. Whatever team is going to come in and bring value or that we see would bring value in terms of media value and viewership and all of that, then we are going to explore those options. And I think whether they're going to poach or just maybe find the right fit if teams come towards them, I don't know that you consider it a poaching if a team's coming and saying, hey, we're open to talking right now. Let's yeah. figure out, you know. But there has to be an aspect of what else can help. And I think that the Big 12 ultimately – ideal situation is a 16 team and 18 team where it's a more balanced healthier with the departure of texas and oklahoma yeah. it's going to be healthier it's going to be more balanced but can we maybe go after four to six that's why they don't need to merge i mean it was pretty clear they did not need to merge when they can go after four to six teams from the pac-12 this is a setback for the pac-12 they're trying to for figure sure. out how to stay alive um they can't go out and find other teams to to, to try and replace usc um, Boise State is not going to do it. Maybe San Diego you know, State. They're not going to do yes. it. Um, and, and, and to get a TV deal, they don't have Los Angeles. And, uh, and the, 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 they're in a struggle here. And so I think this Big 12 merger idea was a way for them to go, you know, we can, we can keep everybody together. We can get a big TV deal from ESPN coming up. The other players seem to be out of the mix. Um, so this is a slap in the face to the Pac-12, the Big 12 going, you know what, we looked at you, we studied the situation, we're not interested. We might be interested in Washington and Oregon and two other schools. I'm not sure who those other two would be. Mm -hmm. Utah likes to think they would be one of them. The Arizona schools think they both would be in there. Colorado's close by. I'm not sure what Colorado brings, but they're right next door. Um, and I think this morning the pac 12s like going, all right, let's go to plan G. We're down to plan G <laughs> is to try and figure out how to convince ESPN to give us a big enough media package to hold everybody together when everybody seems to be now going, what's in the best interest of me moving forward? And that's detrimental to this conference. And ultimately, I mean, the media value is going to drive everything, right? And so... The next few weeks are crucial for the Pac-12 because of the negotiations that are currently going on with ESPN, with Fox, to try to figure out, can we add more value? Can we up that deal for the teams that are remaining? So right now they're portraying that we're going to stand together. There's a portrayal. What you have to. Right, right. right the, the 10 teams remaining. But if that deal is not sweetened at all, I think you're going to see more departures. And if you're the Mountain West Conference, you just sit there and go, Hmm, okay, I wonder if we're going to add. Are we going to be the adding? Are we going to get or is Washington going State, to leave? Oregon State, yeah. Cal, Stanford, or, yeah, or, or is Boise State and San Diego State, maybe yeah. Fresno State. But the, the thing is that they don't, they don't bring a punch with them to save the Pac-12, um, whereas the departures of the Pac-12 would boost, boost the Mountain West. Uh, and Utah's got to be thinking... Um, okay, it's not the Big Ten, it's not the SEC, we're not combining with the Big 12, the ACC's too far away, what's in it for us? And I wouldn't be surprised if, if they are not on the phone, and I'm sure they have been already with the Big 12 going, um, hey, if you move this way, count us in, because there's nothing left over Absolutely. here. Because you know Oregon and Washington are like, we got to get out of this well, place. Well, they're thinking one, two, three steps ahead. And if you, if you have to promise that you won't leave for a certain period of time, uh, these land rights deals, um, you're going to have a hard time getting uh, all those Pac-12 schools to stay on board going, yeah, take our rights for, for the next 15 years when, when you know Oregon's like, uh, we've already said we want to be over there and we're willing to be over here and we'll only stay here if we have to. Uh, how do you do a deal with Maybe that You're with able that to group? negotiate for more money too, right? Yeah. I mean, position yourself by staying or leaving and it's it's the money value that we're talking about it's like someone saying i'll be married to you uh just until something better comes along yeah. <laughs> so i really want you to be plan, committed to me plan b wife <laughs> b yes in yeah. other news yesterday dennis dodd reported and this is really interesting that notre dame would like to remain independent if they can earn at least 75 million annually from their current broadcast partner nbc the current broadcast deal is set to expire in 2035. Now, here's the challenge for Notre Dame. They currently make about $22 million a year annually. They want to get to 75. They're at 22. Dodd's report suggests NBC is seeking shoulder programming from a Power 5 conference to play games before and or after Notre Dame games, which is typically 3.30 Eastern time, the regular afternoon block. Um, so they want a Power 5 conference to join them and give them 
games. And he reported that the Big 12 has emerged as, quote, a strong option to fill NBC's shoulder programming needs. Would you like to see the Big 12 partner with NBC and Notre Dame in a future TV deal? And would that be strong enough to make you really the number three power conference? Right. Anytime Notre Dame is involved, I think it's a good deal because they are a storied program. They have proven they can stand alone on their history, their culture, their winning. They can really play any team they want. Any team wants to play them and then right. be covered, right? Mm -hmm. Networks want to cover them. They will have enough eyeballs on their game to drive that up, the value, the media value. So I see all but good from this if there is a joint deal somehow with that shoulder programming. I think it's good for BYU if Notre Dame stays independent because uh, if they go into the Big Ten, which is probably where they would go because that's where the most money appears to be, um, then the Big Ten's gonna take somebody else so they have an even number, and that just causes more shifting and, and more moving. But if they stay independent, and then they say, you know what, I wanna put my arm around the Big 12. I've already got five ACC games that I gotta play, but you know what, NBC needs another game on Saturday. They just have the one. If Notre Dame's not on, there's no college football on NBC. So they've been kinda of quiet for a while, putting all their money in the Olympics. Um, well, maybe they have some money to spend. And if this is a way for Notre Dame to say, let's make Saturday more valuable to NBC. And get a couple games. And the we'll be the, the main event. Yes. Well, we need an undercard. Yeah. Um, and then maybe NBC goes, okay, you know what? That's, that gives us seven hours of football on Saturday. That's different than three and a half. <laughs> and so up goes the price. Absolutely. But you're right. Notre Dame gets the, like we've seen in this game in Las Vegas, they set the ticket prices, they sell the tickets at that price. Fans can complain. They're too high. They're certainly much higher than, than BYU's used to seeing. But you know what? Every ticket's going to be sold for the game. That's how Notre Dame works. And, uh, and that's why they get cut into the playoff. Hey, you're not in the conference, but you know what? If you win a certain number of games, we'll put you in the mix for the college football playoff. Right, right. No one else gets that because no one else aspect, is them. Dave. Here's the other aspect. Let's say that this does come together, right, the shoulder program. Now, would there be a potential home game for BYU and Notre Dame? <laughs> Let's not even go there. That, that just, I don't think that's well, ever in the cards, but, you, but why not? Why I'm wouldn't there be? There's a higher possibility if that does work out. It would, what would do, I think it would really do is it would give the Big 12 a Saturday on NBC, sure. Saturday morning on ESPN, Saturday night on ESPN, and, um, and, and just give them more play More so coverage. Oklahoma State Baylor BYU Cincinnati Houston just go down the list yep. and if they add four other teams from the Pac-12 uh, you've got now you have Oregon playing in an afternoon game or you have Washington playing in an afternoon game so the the the, the it's like uh, uh, the the black hole caused by the death of a star also it just sucks everybody in and and here's an, the newest idea where you've got P5 leagues going well we could be Notre Dame's friend on NBC that we could do. And Notre Dame's like, we're looking out for ourselves, but you can help us look out for ourselves because yeah. we want to get to 75 million. They want to they stay, stay independent. And so yeah. ultimately, this is helping them do that. Our question of the day following reports that the Big 12 and the Pac 12 are not going to merge, is now the time for the Big 12 to strike and take teams from the Pac 12? Why or why not? Let's hear from you, Sports Nation, in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Border Ozzy Mom on Twitter, no. Let us enjoy our time in the Big 12 before they accept any Pac-12 leftovers. <laughs> There's a lot of people that feel That's that a way. That's good way to put it. <laughs> we had Brian Santiago on here, Deputy Athletic Director at BYU yesterday, and, and I said, hey, if you had a vote, if you had a vote, would you vote to bring Utah into the Big 12? And, and he said, if it makes the Big 12 better and more yes. nationally viable, then yes, and then talked about the, the history of the rivalry stands The rivalry on its own. is good. I'd vote for have you talk about I would too. Yeah. I would. Uh, you know, but there'd be part of me, I'd have a debate in my head, but, but in the end, I would. Doug Heath on Twitter, it seems as if the Big 12 was working towards that in the first place. They worked with the Pac-12 first, but knew the real value isn't in merging the conferences, it's in taking some teams from the other conference. This was an opportunity that the Pac-12 could have done last year when um, Oklahoma and Texas bolted overnight to the SEC, and now all of a sudden the Big 12's on, on wobbly knees, and the Pac-12 could have said, hey, Oklahoma State, Baylor, Texas Tech, and somebody else, why don't you come on over? And it would have killed the Big 12. Right. 
Well, now the shoe's on the other foot. What will the Big 12 do? Yeah. Will they go, you know what? Uh, we don't need five Power Five conferences. We want to take you out. Yeah, we oh, want to be one could. of those super conferences. Well, Drew Christensen on Twitter, absolutely. The Big 12 needs to be aggressive and go after schools that will help boost the conference standing before the SEC or Big 10. Start poaching them. Hashtag BYU Sports Nation. He's ready to get after it. All right, Drew, which four teams do you want? Yeah, that's the question, right? BYUSN, hashtag on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, we encourage you to, to put your opinions out there. We'll share some more on the show. That's the question of the day. Is now the time, now that the Big 12 has said, no thanks, Pac-12, we're not going to merge, um, is now the time for the Big 12 to strike and take four teams away Come from poaching. the Pac-12 to get to 16. Yep. All right, coming up, one NFL analyst believes Tyler Algier is poised for a big season. Do we agree? He's reporting today, fulfilling his dreams. Fresh off 21 points yesterday in the basketball tournament, Zach Selyus, former Cougar, going to join us here on this Tuesday. It's how we roll on BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always. And get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. <laughs> uh -oh. Do you not know the groom's name? I missed it on our first date, and it's way too late to ask. Whenever you experience something funny, the first thing you want to do is like share it with your loved ones. Seeing that comedy like helped us do things, that like, we want to use that to help other people in a way. We had one kid whose make a wish was to come to Studio C. It made me be like these goofy sketches uh, mean a lot to people. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join Spencer Jerem in a 90-minute special for the 2022 Y Awards. They will be in tuxedos as they celebrate the best athletes, teams, and moments of the past BYU athletics year. Tune in Thursday at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We are live in Studio C with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play, -play, Dave McCann with the great Kristen Kozlowski. Zach Selyus, former Cougar, he played tough on the outside, he played tough on the inside. One of the overall most physical, toughest players uh, in BYU history to play so many different roles. He's live with us this morning. Good morning, Zach. Morning, how are you guys? Good, good. Do you like being known as a guy who did everything as opposed to, man, the guy sh could shoot the three? Yeah, it's fun to be known as everything because then nobody ever knows what you're going to do. <laughs> I think uh, you're also known for that stash. I like to see that you still have the stash from your senior year, I think it was. <laughs> yep, yeah, I got to keep it going. It's kind of a trademark now, and people hate it, and that's what makes me keep it. <laughs> well, last night in the basketball tournament, 21 points. Uh, your team got beat, uh, and so everybody's out to do something else. But uh, tell us about last night and uh, and your 21. Uh, it was awesome. I mean, it was my first time playing in the tournament. 
and just to be a part of it to play against a really good team um i mean sideline cancer is known for their talent and the players that have been on their team before um so it was really fun to play against them and just to compete um our team only had you know two days together out here in cincinnati and we came together really quick um and we lost a few guys on the way so we we looked like an AU team compared to a professional team. <laughs> and so it was really fun to go out there and just compete and to be in the game the whole way. And maybe next year we'll be able to get a win out of it. But you said playing in this basketball tournament, you wanted to do that to get your name out there. Do you feel like you accomplished that? Yeah, I definitely think I did. Um, I mean, there's always room to improve uh, no matter where you are. Uh, so it was just a great opportunity. I mean, I met new guys, met people on different teams, kind of proved and put out my name just to say, hey, I'm doing this. And then, you know, I kind of backed it up on the court, which was really helpful to be able to put my name out there. And so it was really awesome. It was a great time. And hopefully we can you know, get bigger and better things from it. When you look back at your time at BYU, you were asked to do so many things. I remember coming in as a a hot shooting freshman and sophomore. It was all about the three. But by the time you wrapped up your career, you were boxing out guys that were five inches taller than you, and your job was, was to get rebounds. How did that variety prepare you now as you try to continue your basketball career and get paid for it? Uh, it helps a ton, um, especially with yesterday. Uh, we, Like I said, we lost a few guys, and so... I ended up being the tallest on our team, which hasn't been like that for since I was probably in elementary. And so to be able to be the five man, but then also being able to kind of control everything that we did. So I was able to make a lot of decisions, had a lot of mismatches. And so it was really, you know, fun in that sense, but it prepared me for this opportunity that we had yesterday to be able to be ready for that situation and to be able to you know, make decisions as a point guard and then also to be able to go and bang down low with the centers. So, I mean, you kind of have to do it all just to win a game and that's what it takes to win. And hopefully next year we can keep battling for it. Now, Zach, last time you were on the show, you mentioned that you might not be going back to Georgia. Does that change at all? And, and what's next for you? Having lost the game yesterday with this team, what's the next step for you? Um, the next step is still just negotiating different contracts. Um, I'm just trying to look for the next team that will fit my game and, you know, a team that will be able to help me get to not only next year, but to the next step after that. And so I'm just looking for the next team and also a team that will, you know, be able to handle me and my family and to be able to handle two little boys on the, you know, with us as well. And so, you just have to be able to keep, you know, grinding through this process and to be able to find, you know, a team that will fit perfect for me. BYU's basketball team is looking for its own fit now that the roster's been almost completely retooled and one more year to go before the Big 12 and the challenges that, that come there. What do you expect from Mark Pope's group? And were you surprised to see so many outgoing faces and incoming guys now? Yeah, I mean, I was a little, you know, surprised with a lot of guys leaving, guys coming in. Um, but I, I love Coach Pope. Um, he He's a smart coach. He's one of the greatest coaches of all time. And I think, I think he knows I have all the faith in the world that this BYU basketball team is going to surprise a lot of people in that sense. Um, so I hope the best for them. You know, I hope that they can be able to keep you know grinding and keep doing the things to be a winning organization and able to be a big time program and i think coach pope has the tools to be able to do it and so i trust him and i know that he knows what he's doing and you know he got a great staff on his side as well and so it'll be fun to watch these guys this next year 
Now you mentioned your two little boys. I know that's not easy to do to be a father and take on all of this that you're trying to, to negotiate with new contracts and finding a team that fits for you. How much do they travel with you and what's it like taking on those father duties as well? Obviously that's your priority. Right, yeah, my family is definitely number one. Um, but I mean, I have an amazing wife who helps me a lot. Uh, she sacrifices a ton so that I can be able to continue with this journey and you know they do travel with me when we find a team and go and so it's fun to be able to be there as a family and we try as much as possible not to be away from each other more than you know a couple weeks and so being at this tournament being away from them it's only been three days and it's been hard you know to be away but luckily it's not another country and while well, they're back in america and so um, it'll be good to see them again, and hopefully we can find something that we can all be together. And just to be able to have that support system wherever we are, it just makes it even more fun. Zach Salius is here with us on BYU Sports Nation. Zach, you got to tell us what's going on with that lamp behind you. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. I've been wondering the same thing as soon as I checked into this hotel. But, hey, it's it's all Cincinnati. We just got to love it. That's that is all Cincinnati. Uh, these two boys you have, when they start playing ball, are you going to let them camp out on the uh, three-point line, or are you going to bring them down into the paint? Oh, they're going to do it all. They're going to be, they're going to be your Swiss Army knife. They're going to have it all. All right, all right. I'm sure they will. We look forward to see them here. Zach Selyus, 21 points last night. Uh, nice job. Best of luck moving forward. Let's stay in touch and and uh, and keep us posted on where you're going to shoot hoops next. Thank you. Will do. All right. I'll tell you what, when he was playing um, and, and he had to change his role, which changed his stats, mm -hmm. and suddenly he wasn't shooting 49% from the three-point right. line because he was in trying to rebound on a 6'9 guy. Um, and what he pulled off, uh, we haven't seen guys be able to do as successful as he. Absolutely. And, and he didn't get enough credit while he was there. Most of us were focusing on... Ah, he should be out here shooting threes, but that wasn't his job. His job changed. And so it's great to see him find a success. And, and if he can continue to find ways to get paid to play the game, more power to him. Oh, for sure. And it's not easy, like you said. I mean, being a father of two, you have a family, you have to take that into account. I had the opportunity to play with his sister, Nancy. Nancy and I are great friends who yeah. currently coaches at Lone Peak. I've known the Celius family for years. And they, there is no doubt in my mind that he's going to work as hard as he can to try to just secure another spot and that he can keep playing. And we know that there's no doubt that mustache is going to live on. Yep, let's keep that going for sure. <laughs> All right, coming up, our latest edition of Top 5 Tuesday. And who are our favorite father-son duos or trios in BYU history? It's BYU Sports Nation. Here are the Hey Moolies. Back with more in a moment. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. And BYU made such a difference in our lives. I think really helped mold us as to, as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From car accidents to business law, from divorce to estate planning, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Whoa. 
Wow. Awesome. So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> With a free BYU TV app. I like it. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marist, enabling global trade for a growing world. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get great content throughout the day, follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. She is Crispin. I'm Dave. We're holding it down this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you're watching. Let's whip it. The Cougar Whip Arounds presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. All right, NFL Network's Steve Weish said yesterday that Tyler Algier is one rookie to keep your eye on that he could be the Falcons' bell cow this season. What are your expectations for Tyler? I think Weish might have been listening to David Nixon on this program <laughs> yesterday. Uh, Algier has got a great opportunity to get in, get carries, and make a difference. The Falcons uh, got rid of a couple of running backs after last season. The two they have with Algier are much older than him. And uh, Tyler's got fresh legs, coming into the league as a rookie, reporting to camp today. And I know the Falcons have high hopes for him. Uh, and for Tyler, he was a kid who almost went home because he was out of money after his walk-on season. Got a scholarship, became a running back instead of a linebacker. Last year, finished as the single-season all-time rushing leader at BYU. And the Falcons jumped on him. Got him late, fifth round. For a guy like this, it's going to play this season. I think he could be the bell cow. I'd want to be a bell cow if I was a running back. You the bell cow that kind of means cheering stars. I think that's a very good compliment for him. He's a workhorse. He's a proven workhorse. He's an NFL build type running back, and he's able to get in there and get you three to four yards of carry. I mean, I, I think that this is a guy that's going to do well. He plays north to south, and he's built for it. Tough as nails and humble, and uh, Cougar fans love him. Abe Alvarez was named the new BYU baseball pitching coach. He comes from Nevada, where he spent four years. Also brings a World Series ring from the 2004 Boston Red Sox. Can he be a difference maker for BYU baseball, not only this last season of the WCC, but when they roll into the Big 12? I think he can be a difference maker if he can recruit. Recruiting is going to be crucial going into the Big 12 and bringing in the talent that we need, providing depth for the team. But absolutely, I mean, you look at his credentials, his experience. He was an All-American at Long Beach State as a pitcher. This is a guy that is great for the job, a great pickup for the staff. But we've got to continue to recruit. How many times have we seen a good hitting BYU baseball team go into the WCC tournament and get beat by one right. good pitcher? Yeah. Good pitching trumps everything. This guy is coming from a great baseball program at Nevada. They've been good for a long, long time. And uh, if he's got the magic touch on the hill, BYU can win a lot of games. Absolutely. All right, Lane Kiffin said yesterday as part of the SEC Media Days that he believes there should be a salary cap for NIL money. Do you agree with this, Dave? On the surface, yes, absolutely, because some guys are getting nine million bucks reportedly, and and some are are, are getting a, ba a bag of peanuts. Um, but it's up to these businesses to be able to decide what they value a person uh, and, and what they'll play a, pay, a player. Remember, the schools aren't uh, deciding how much a, a sure. kid gets. It's, it's the outside world that the NCAA is allowed in. Um, and so maybe, I guess, the better answer might be let the market decide. Uh, Lane Kiffin's at Ole Miss, and he's getting outbid by Texas A&M. Of course he doesn't like it. Yeah. He needs a cap. Yeah. Well. If you've got the businesses to, to provide, you don't want a cap. You want the best players. And these big NIL deals attract the best players. So I'm going to side with capitalism. Uh, but I understand Lane Kiffin, and I understand BYU. But I was told by um, uh, Scott Warner of GIG, who's got an NIL deal with, with BYU, that he believes BYU can compete with any school in the country when it comes to NIL. Because the businesses around BYU and the boosters who run those businesses, they want to support the athletes. They want to support them, and they're successful, and they can pay them however much they want. Yeah. Um, and it's not the school saying you won't pay them this much, you will pay them that no, much. No, they're not regulating it. So, until the NCAA, it's like a wild west we hear. Until the NCAA comes in and says, here are the new rules. There aren't any rules. And until there aren't any rules, let capitalism And prevail. I don't think there should be a cap. I don't. I mean, you can't put a value, you know, here. It's, it's just like a professional player, right? You can't put a value on them. These kids, 
I think need more instruction. I think they should be required as a freshman to come in and take some financial literacy class yeah. that will teach them how to manage their money. But they're working hard for this. They're working building their social media platforms. They're working hard to push their name, image, and likeness. So I think they deserve as much as they can earn, but let's teach them how to manage it. And if you're the company behind the NIL, you need to teach them that as well. Sure. You want them to be successful because that's why you're involved with them. Show them how to do it. A lot of them are. Some probably aren't. But show them how to do it. And for the love, teach them about taxes. <laughs> so and debt. Taxes debt. and debt. Those, are, those aren't going away. Big Game Boomer named BYU fans the friendliest in the state of Utah. Do you agree? I agree. Happy Valley. I don't want to pat ourselves on the back, but we're very kind here. We are kind. Now look, there's a lot of great fans up in Logan, but that student <laughs> section is brutal. You're, you're out. Oh. You don't get to be the friendliest. I think our Rock Utah, is you're respectful. Out. The Rock is respectful. Yeah. Very friendly. I've never heard of a fan from the opposing team, and I'm sure there's instances uh, where they've left going, um, you know, we all sit by obnoxious fans. That's different sure. than Being foul, nice or vile yeah. fans that are standing up drunk and yelling and this and that. Never heard anyone come out and go, you know what, I had the worst experience at BYU because of that. Um, but you If know. you do, they're rare. Very rare. Sure. Sometimes you sit in front of someone who stands up the whole game. And your back's sore and you don't want to stand annoying, up. It's right? like, okay. <laughs> but uh, friendliest in the state, absolutely. We'll take it. We'll take it. You bet. All right. The new Madden rankings have been released for the former BYU and current San Francisco 49ers linebacker Fred Warner. They're saying he's the highest ranked linebacker in the game. Are you surprised by this? Getting ready for his fifth season. Just got married. Has a big contract. So he's getting paid. Um, he is a force. He is the best linebacker in the NFL. Yeah. There's a group of elites that that, uh, that you could argue, well, this guy, this guy, but well, Fred's our elite, and uh, and I think he is the best linebacker. He does so many things. He did so many things at BYU, yes. and, and then he just got better. Right? It's got, yeah. And uh, he is the backbone of that 49er defense. I'm glad to see they're paying him. And, uh, and as, a, as a happy newlywed, we, uh, we wish him the best reporting to camp here next week. Yeah, good luck. I totally agree. I think he's one of the best in the game and that he rightly deserved to be ranked that high. ESPN tweeted out the question yesterday, who's your favorite father-son duo of all time? So we looked at it and we thought, well, who's your favorite father-son BYU duo of all time? All right, there were numerous ones that we could have gone with, but I'm going to go with the Reynolds family and that gene pool that has been <laughs> absolutely fantastic at supplying linemen for BYU. So you start with the dad, Lance Reynolds. Yeah. He played here in the late 70s, played in the NFL, coached here for nearly 30 years, and then four of his children come here. Four boys come, play at BYU, three make it to the NFL. Hard to argue a better, it's not a duo, but it is, what, what would that be? Quadruple or... It's a giant, yes. giant and, group and of And not Reynolds. only does it stop there, I am friends with the Reynolds, and I know that the grandkids are now coming up, and they're going to be probably in a BYU jersey here soon. We know they're going to be big. Yes. Uh, on that list, I think that's that's great. That's going to be a tough one to beat, although I think I've got one pretty close. But uh, you've got the Kafusis with Steve, yep. Bronson, and Corbin. Uh, Lake Hemuli in Houston and Hema, one of our producers. You throw him in the mix. That's that's a trio. Kaylin Hall with KJ, Jaron, and Dawson playing out uh, on the baseball team, Gary Pay with his son Connor, Byron Rex with Isaac, Isaac. Jim Freeland with Blake. Uh, a lot. But I'm going to go on the basketball side with the Haas family. Marty, Tyler, and TJ. Tyler's number one all time in scoring, scoring. at BYU. Okay. TJ's coming in at number seven, and Marty's at number 24. So you got three kids in the top 25 scoring all time at BYU in basketball. Um, yeah. I'm going They're with the up there family. Too. All right. Now we love I the Rock. <laughs> the Rock have theirs. Here's what they uh, tweeted out yesterday with uh, Jaron Hall there on the left and the Utes on the right. Uh, and he <laughs> says he's ours. Uh, who is your favorite all-time father-son sports duo? With uh, Jaron being the daddy and the Utes being the son. <laughs> All based, of course, on last year's performance at LaBelle University. Nice job, Rock. You're still the friendliest uh, fan base in the country, but you know, the Rock, they've got their, they got their points to make. Absolutely. All right, coming up, a rise and shout to a couple of Cougars drafted yesterday. And the top five multi-sport athletes in BYU history. We are talking about duos a moment ago. Now the top five multi-sport athletes. This is BYU Sports Nation.
Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. My grandfather started this company in 1947. He couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. As we've spent time working with so many groups around the world, we've learned a lot. I have really learned the importance of gratitude. African electrical systems. Well, I've learned that Kieran actually loves concrete. The power of cooperation. But above all, we've learned the world is a family. And fixing someone else's problems ends up fixing my own. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Sports Nation has its own YouTube channel. Get all the interviews by subscribing to and sharing the BYU Sports Nation YouTube channel today. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live here in Studio C. Dave McCann, Kristen Kozlowski. One of the great things about Tuesday, uh, a lot of people like to think it's Taco Tuesday. For us, it's the Top 5 Tuesday. Presented by Delta Airlines, Cleet Keep climbing the top five dual sport athletes in BYU history. All right, let's start it off. Things at number five. Doug Howard. Doug played baseball and basketball at BYU from 1968 to 1970. He set seven records and was named an All-American first baseman while leading the basketball team in scoring his final two seasons. He was then drafted by both the California Angels and Chicago Bulls, ultimately sticking to baseball and playing professionally for seven years. How about that, Doug Howard? In at number four, Ryan Hancock. Ryan was drafted Major League Baseball right out of high school. He turned it down to play baseball and quarterback at BYU. Started eight games, leading the Cougars to a 7-2 record. He was also pitching across the street after college. Drafted again to the Major Leagues. Joining the California Angels. Played five years before finishing out his career in Japan. He had a rocket arm. Look at that pass. At number three, one of my favorites, we have Jennifer Hampson. Hampson played basketball and volleyball for BYU. She finished in the top ten in points, rebounds, and blocks for basketball. And on the volleyball side, finished in the top ten in kills, hitting percentage, and aces for volleyball. After winning numerous awards and being named a first-team All-American several times, she then went on to play four seasons in the WNBA and overseas before playing professional volleyball in Germany for two years. Not only played dual sports in college, did it professionally as well. So tough to play two sports. Number two, Shauna Robach. Shauna played soccer and ran track at BYU from 1995 to 1999. She was an outdoor track heptathlon All-American as well as a six-time All-American in soccer. Six times. After college, she played professional soccer for a couple of years, became a professional bobsledder, eventually winning a silver medal in the 2006 Olympics. Outstanding. All right, and coming in at number one, the greatest multi-sport athlete in BYU history. We got to go with Danny Ainge. Drafted by the Blue Jays before starting college, Danny played in the minors all throughout college, making his way to the majors in 1979. At that time, Ainge played basketball at BYU, leading the Cougars in scoring in every year, helping them make it to their first and only Elite Eight appearance. He was then drafted by the Boston Celtics in 1981 and played for 16 years and won two NBA championships. Now he's running the Jazz. 
Yeah, there's nobody, there's no one that's that's done both sports. Run of the Jazz and BYU. structuring this ever-changing roster that is going to hopefully yeah, build the Jazz. Is. Also plays more golf than anybody I know. Somehow he works <laughs> that in. My, I've shared the story before. My, my favorite Danny Ainge story is I was a ball boy for the team uh, when I was 12, and I would rebound for him before games. And uh, so here comes the superstar, and I'm just this punk kid. I'm still a punk, but I was a punk kid then. And uh, he'd ask me how my day at seventh grade was going and, and all of my challenges in life as we're having this time together and uh, never forget That's it. That's awesome. Yeah. You'll never forget that. Great guy. Jerem Jordan is live from Cedar Hills Golf Course. If you're wondering where the guys are, there's the PGA Tour, there's the Live Tour, and then there's the BYU Corporate Sponsorship <laughs> Tournament. Jerem? What's up, guys? Uh, it's, it's great to be out here at the Cedar Hills Golf Club today. My homies. Out here, let's see. We got we got Brady and Eric and Garrett and Mike, uh, and we are we are what seven under through eight. We are seven under through wow. eight thanks to these guys. Uh, so we're playing pretty well, but at, at, in the end, we know that Brand Santiago will just uh, you know sign the the lowest scorecard and probably win. But that's okay. <laughs> we're here to have fun. I'm actually lining up for a birdie putt here. The guys are nice enough to let me take it. Oh, so yeah, let's we'll, see we'll this. Let's see this, see this for sure. We're going to okay. take your word that it's for a birdie. Uh, let's who, who knows how much he's made that ball? Max Wesley of the BYU golf team hit on this hole for everybody. And so he gave us like a 300-yard drive. Nice. So, All right. Then we approach shot up here. How, and how far is this? Th well, where, like a four-footer? Five-footer? Like three yeah, feet? Let's say eight feet. Eight feet. Oh, <laughs> let's go with eight yeah. feet. Uh, Television is very Here he is, Jerem Jordan, putting for oh, birdie. Oh. Come on. Come Too on. Let's, 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 let's get four more other putts. Four other putts to get that birdie, right? We're going to be all right. I'm the fifth guy anyways. I'm the bonus guy. But, yeah, Spencer's in a different group. I think you're going to hear from him later perhaps. But uh, beautiful day. I saw Colin Chandler out here at the golf course. We nailed the birdie club. So. This Colin may Chandler be. out here. He, uh, he, he leaves for his uh, home MC mission next week. Kalani's out here. Had his baby Sunday, by the way. Everybody's doing well. That was great to hear. Fantastic. So, yeah, great, uh, great day up out of the golf course. Thanks for uh, holding it down back at, in Studio C. You're welcome. We're taking one for the team today. We're just glad you're out having a good time. You were only out you for like two months on vacation, back yeah. one day and now back out playing out again some golf. For golf. Yep. All right, Dave, Jim. I had enough. One day and I'm out. Finish those putts. Come on. Help your team out. I know. The rest I of the know. Way. That, was, that was a gimme. Come on. That's the great Jerem Jordan from Cedar Hills Golf Course. We'll check in with Spencer live in just a moment as they're out there. Uh, hanging out with the folks who uh, spend a lot of money and help BYU be what it is. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right, coming up, we'll see what Spencer's up to and if he can make a birdie. And a rise and shout out to two elite baseball players for the Cougars. BYU Sports Nation continues after this. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. This is your guys' song. You deserve our goal. 50,000 books in the hands of children. Okay, and I can help. Why do you do this? What do you get out of this? It needs hope, and you need to show that little bit of love. When you lay down your head. People come here one way, and they change while they're here. It was so great to be a part of it. to the White House staff. We are the first family, and we were hoping that you could help us out. 
You want me to babysit some Russian kid? Someone is looking to hurt both of our families, TJ. How is this even possible? An American falls in a fashion. Why should I be scared? You've got Max. <laughs> This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU radio apps today or download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform and please subscribe, rate, and review. Nice to see that uh, green grass. They're going to start wearing it out here in a couple weeks when the team reports for fall camp. Let's get back out live to Cedar Hills Golf Course. Spencer Linton out there at the BYU Corporate Sponsorship Tournament. I believe, Spencer, you're ready to tee off here? That is correct. We're on number 10, Dave. Uh, I will point out my group is eight under par after eight holes, which I'm sure is better than whatever Jerem lied to you about, <laughs> especially after a birdie putt. But yeah, we're just about to tee off with the mountain backdrop. Uh, obviously, great event. Great to be out with the football coaches and, and so many people that make BYU Athletics great and, and help keep the program running. All right, let's let you hit, and then we'll bring you back. And I uh, got a few questions for you. By the way, Jerem's oh. group, I believe, is a seven under par. Yeah, that's what he so said. They're, they're right on your heels. If it, if it was an honest minus seven. <laughs> now that is a question, isn't it, Dave? That is <laughs> that is. A question. I'm going to hand the phone to my buddy Kendrick, and he's going right. to. I can't believe I'm going to do this. But I'm going to swing a golf club on okay. live TV. Keep your eye on it. Yeah. All right, Kendricks. Keep your head okay. down. Head down. Kendrick, we're looking at you. you. We want to look at Spencer. Okay. Uh, okay. So then, listen. Not, there right? we go. There's live Spencer's TV. back. Yeah. Hey, train Kendrick up because this is live TV. <laughs> okay, everybody, all right. Ready. I'm, I'm a new cameraman for BYU TV today, so. All right, so we got go. Spencer's got the ball on the tee. I don't know if this is a par four. Looks like it must be a par four or par five. Par five. One warm-up swing. He's That's it. Bomb it. One warm-up swing. We don't have our golf track on this shot. Oh. Right up. Oh. oh Let's see. Did he shake it to the right? Second. Shot of the day. We need live TV for the next 12 holes, please. <laughs> uh, hey. hey, the form was good. Where did the, you know. Where'd the ball go? Yeah, we can't see the ball, Spence. I'm not even kidding you. It's in the middle of the fairway. Wow. All right. And how I promise. The, judged by the across crowd, that, the gallery hey, Tom, you got Tom, with you, I was pretty excited about that. Tom almost across the way, and he's yelling that my ball is out of bounds, which is not true. But <laughs> I promise a good story from Kalani Sataki to you guys. Let's hear it. So when I showed up this morning, he told me, I mean, and we recently, you know, heard that he had his baby girl, and she's beautiful and perfect and precious. And he said, I have to play in this event, and then I've got to go back to the hospital and be with Timberly to get discharged. He left his wife at the hospital to play golf, but he, he said he did it for the commitment of the program and to be around the sponsors. But Timberly, the, the real MVP is Timberly. She's a good sport to let Kalani do this. Hey, do they, get, they have a name yet, Spencer? Have we heard, heard a name yet for the new Sataki? I haven't heard a name yet. They may. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they have not told me the name yet. Just know that she's healthy and perfect. And he said, man. I forgot what it's like to be a new baby daddy, but like I really miss that. He's what I don't miss is changing diapers for new babies. Yep. And I, I think we can all relate with that. He's going to be in such a good mood for fall camp. Uh, <laughs> sleeping. He'll on, have on an two outlet though. Hours. So his uh, wife is the rock star for Peyton, sure. Peyton and Christine Wilgar, they're expecting their first this week. Any word on the Wilgars? Uh, so talk to Peyton. He said his wife's doing really well. Um, no, no word on uh, if baby has uh, come yet. This, it, like you said, it could happen today, but he said she's just been a rock star, and they're super excited. And obviously, if you haven't seen their deep blue story, they're ready to be parents. I mean, just what, what an amazing couple um, to essentially adopt, you know, some of his, uh, his nieces and nephews and, and help out that way. They're ready to be parents, so super excited for them as well. So what hole are you on out there? So this is number 10. We started, so we're, this is our ninth hole, okay. uh, our, our tenth hole. Um, we're about halfway through, and, yeah, playing with the Wilner and O'Reilly group and the folks from Intermountain Healthcare, and just, it's just, it's crazy. It's just such a huge effort to, to make BYU Athletics for what it is. And so I know that uh, so many grateful people out here, just because of uh, the, the contributions, the help, the sacrifice that go into helping us do what we can do. All right, you see those three carts that just pulled up behind you? They'd like you to move off the tee box and onto <laughs> yeah. the next hole. So we'll let you go. Like a slow group. Well, listen, if you've got 15 seconds, Dave and Kristen, 
I, I ran into my, my buddy who just said that my ball was out of bounds. Okay. Oh, there he is. is. Right? We have a fence going on. Hi, guys. Hi, Tom. Hey, it's a beautiful day out here. It's 78 going on 93. <laughs> but hey, what can I say? I'm with Spence playing golf in yeah. July. It don't get better than that. Life is good. Life Tom, is good. Tom, can we get an official ruling on that drive? Was it in the <laughs> fairway or is it out of bounds? <laughs> well, it, <laughs> It was right down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> As it we're, should we're be. We're lucky a few times, you know. We get lucky every once in a while. Yeah, that was a good shot. All we right, miss guys. you guys. You should be out here instead of working. I know. Yeah. I know. We're holding it down back here. You got a few things coming up, Tom, with football season and realignment and all that stuff. So, yeah, hit that ball around for a couple which, more hours. Which realignment? <laughs> Spencer, would you tell him about one. that? Is that how I move my feet when I'm approaching the ball for a drive? That's called that's called out of alignment. That's what that's called. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know me. That's right. Spencer Linton, Tom Homo, enjoy your day out there at the Cedar Good Hills stuff. Golf Thanks, guys. All right. That's fun. Live shots, live golf here on BYU Sports yeah. Nation. I'm not a golfer. Yeah? I'll try. I, I play, but I play horribly. Um, but what Jerem said about Brian Santiago, who was here on the show yesterday, that guy's a golfer. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. probably going to win this thing. So don't be surprised. We have the our scores main, Our tomorrow. main producer, Ben Bagley, is out there as well, isn't he, or with them. Or, uh, he is a golfer. Is he Loves a golfer? Loves to golf. Oh, yeah. Our question of the day, following reports that the Big 12 and the Pac-12 are not going to merge, is now the time for the Big 12 to strike and take teams from the Pac-12? Why or why not? Justin Pullman on Instagram, yes, take the teams that will drive revenue. Utah, Colorado, Arizona State, and Arizona would be good additions. I also think if we take those four, Oregon and Washington would be forced to, uh, in a sense, to join in as well. Wazoo and Oregon State may as well join the Mountain West. So that's Justin's take. And then in response, our Elite Voice of the Day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Blainer 101 on No Twitter. relation to Blaine Fowler, Blaine by the Fowler. way. This is yes. Blainer. We confirm that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now is the time. If the Big 12 doesn't make their move now, there may never be the number three conference. It is in arms race right now between the Big 12, Pac-12, and the ACC. And the Big 12 has the advantage right now. If they wait, that advantage will disappear. So the general theme is strike now. Yeah, poach now. Go get them. We'll see what happens. Uh, again, the, the reports last night uh, from Pete Thamel that uh, the merger talks, however serious Are they've over. been over the last three weeks, Big 12 said, no thanks. We yep. looked at what you have. We're out. And so that's where we are today. Our Rise and Shout Outs are presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Andrew Pintar, a fifth-round selection. Cy Nielsen, eighth round, getting drafted onto Major League Baseball. We'll see what they do next. They can sign, get a bonus, go and play professionally, or come back and play for the Cougars next year. Some decisions ahead, but I have a feeling that we have seen the last of them at Miller Park. All right, our thanks to our today's guest, Zach Selyus. And the conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I guess, Use the hashtag BYU Sports. I guess Jeremy and Spencer were guests as well uh, on, yeah. on their own we'll show. Yeah. And Tom Homo. For Kristen, I'm Dave. Shout out to Christine Wilgar and Timberly Sataki. Go Cougs!